was it really, I just want to be better. I want to look at and document myself so that I can kind of be my own coach, critique a little bit. A lot of people that follow me now, they're just like, oh, Matt's just a runner. Like, they don't know that I played college football. They don't know that I got, like, I was a personal trainer for a couple years before I really got into being a creator. This is our only outlet. The yep. phone, the screen. And so I think now, a couple of years later, so many people are just kind of stuck in that habit and that routine. You can soak it all up, but if you're not doing, if you're not applying, where is it going? What's the mm. point? You know, you're kind of just, you're a sponge that never gets to clean anything. Yeah. It's your duty to find your own balance and what mm. works for you. What people don't understand about me is that I'm a lot more introverted than people think. Why is that, do you think? For me personally, it's just... How do you control yourself when those moments come, when those ideas come to not undo the quiet time and the downtime that you just set aside for yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, what's up guys, Matt Choi here, endurance athlete and content creator, welcoming you guys all to the Ever Forward Radio Podcast. Here we go. Matt, we're here, man, live and in person finally. In the flesh, Like bro. how many months later? Dude, it's been Back in March. Yeah, I know. Like I know. Dude, it's but it's it's best when it like marinates like this and if, when when it works out timing wise, it's uh it's just it's better that way. Friendships are best marinated. Dude, for sure. For <laughs> sure. That's a fact. Just like any recipe. Very true. Very true. So I ran into you actually this morning, shout out collective. Yeah. Uh, we were getting a little workout in. Mm -hmm. And dude, I was cracking up. I saw you walk in, like water bottle, backpack, you got your tripod. And so I want to kick things off for the creator out there listening. Is this the new norm? Is this like the new daily essentials? You, you, got, you got your go bag, you got your water, you got whatever you need for the day, but then you got your tripod, you got your camera. Is that what you reach for? Is that your just go-to now? I mean, honestly, the tripod just stays in my car. Um, <laughs> a, a lot of times I just film off iPhone just because yeah. it's convenient. So I just have a tripod like when I'm going into the gym and people always ask me like, like, are you filming something specific? I'm like, no, I'm just like, I'm just documenting. Like I'm just gonna get a couple clips and if it ends up turning into a reel or if it ends mm. up being used as B-roll or even just a story, um, part of like my journey as a creator has always just been like, I'm not ever really just trying to like create content or curate a certain thing. I think there's moments of that, mm. but generally speaking, I'm just documenting a lot mm. of what I do. And sometimes you use the, the content and sometimes you don't. And yeah. that's kind of been my, my mindset ever since I got started. It was just like, yo, we're just gonna film. And I don't, there's nothing in particular. It's just like, I'm gonna, if anything, I'm gonna look at my form and see if there's anything in particular I can work on in terms of my own wellness. So was that kind of the start for you was I wanna document my training, which we're going to get into. I got a lot of questions around the running <laughs> world, man. You guys are blowing my mind right now. Was it really, I just want to be better. I want to look at and document myself so that I can kind of be my own coach, critique a little bit. For sure. I mean, I got into this space as a personal trainer four years ago. Mm -hmm. So like, that's where like a lot of people that follow me now, they're just like, oh, Matt's just a runner. Like they don't know that I played college football. They don't know that I got, like I was a personal trainer yeah. for a couple of years before I really got into being a creator. And back then I was just very focus on the details. Mm. And I wanted to really like understand my body, right, as a human. And obviously understanding where my strengths, where my weaknesses. And the best thing about content or any type of film is that you can always look back. Like mm. I play football, so like I'm always thinking like, oh, like- Roll the tape. Yeah, roll, roll the, the tape. tape, roll the tape. Like the cameras don't yeah. lie. Like whether you are performing or you're not, or you missed your execution of a play, or there's an opportunity for you to exploit the defender. Like all those mm. details within like film, I kind of now use the content that I get as my own film, whether it's on a pod and I'm like, dude, I wish I answered this question in this way. And I'm always Preach, analyzing, man. you know Preach. what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, I think even when it comes to fitness and my wellness, like it comes from that mindset of like, all right, like I'm always looking for room to improve. All right, so walk us through your approach to critiquing to improve versus critiquing and how do you not beat yourself up? This is, yeah, I mean, this is, I think, a lot of people struggle with this, right? Whether it's in their wellness and fitness or in their own content of trying to perfect the video. I think there is a fine balance of being your harshest critic while also being your best fan, right? And mm -hmm. I think there's a mix of that that I have where I think people overanalyze their own subjective opinion and think that that's worthy of all the weight in the world. Is it, do you think over analyzation, if that's a word, uh, is it over analyzing or just straight into comparison? I think, honestly, I think it's a mix, right? Because like naturally what we do is we scroll on socials and we're like, yo, this person that's in my space or this person that's not in my space is doing X, Y, or Z. And naturally we're like, yo, why is my video not like that? Like, why isn't it up to that standard, yeah. right? 
and I have the same hook, the same hundred you know, percent. Like it's not as yeah, drawing in yeah. exactly. It's like oh, I, I could have improved in this aspect, mm. but ultimately, it's up to the people to decide what is a good piece of content. Like I'm sure you and I have both S- been say that in, again real quick. It's up to the people to decide what is a good piece of content or what is engaging for them. Yeah, right. I, I needed to hear that today. Yeah, that's good. I like. And that. I think it's just like I think as all creators is like we think that oh, this is gonna be the video that goes off. And then when you take all the time to edit that video or produce that video, you post it and you're like kind of underwhelmed. Yeah. It creates an expectation in your mind of like, oh, it should do this well. When in reality, Mm. it's your opinion of that piece of content is one, it's one person's opinion. You have to allow the audience, the people to decide what is a viral piece of content or what's a great piece of content. And I think for me, that comes in the form of moving fast Mm. and just saying like, hey, like I'm not going to waste time on the specific cut or transition or like if there's a typo if i stutter like i'm like all right well it's human like i'm gonna do that yeah, that that's yeah. actually natural and i think the quicker people get into that mindset of like yo speed is actually your best advantage not being a perfectionist and that's kind of how i've always been thinking about content and i think gary v definitely helped me reframe that uh I mindset. See a lot of speed spill over from uh from gary influence for sure 100 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. so i think it's you know I don't listen to as much Gary now. And I'm, I have so much respect for Gary, but I think it's, you know how when Gary talks about it, it's like, yo, at some point, guys, like you consume my content and once you get the gems you need to get, go move on and go start move executing. On. Exactly, yeah. And I think for so many people, they spend so much time learning and processing. And I always talk about being a lifelong learner, but once you learn a concept, it's now your duty to try to execute it. And I think there's so many people that read the book, they listen to the pod and they're just, they're, they're thinking, they're contemplating, but they take no action. Mm-hmm. And it's why they find themselves in the same spot of continuing to just, oh, be a consumer of information. I consume a lot of information, but it's typically in areas where I'm like, okay, now I'm trying to get into this sector. Now I'm trying to learn YouTube more. It's very now, like, intentional. Exactly. And then you that. like act on it. Like if I, like when I started wanting to focus more on YouTube, yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm going to invest more into YouTube, getting a producer, getting an editor, learning from Mr. Beast, like learning from people that are at the best at what they do and then implement it. Mm. And the same thing would go like for me, like I want to, like I had a podcast three years ago and oh, no this way. year I wanted to relaunch one. Come on and, back, man. Exactly. Come on back. You know, so water's warm. hundred yeah. percent. So I think for people, I think my best piece of advice is mm. like, don't s- spend time to learn, but make sure that you're actually getting into the game because that's where you learn the best. There's this quote that I say a lot, and I heard it from another podcast, and I forget the actual guy, the guest, but he said, knowing without doing is the same thing as not knowing. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck, Mm. because I think the last probably like two years, I I think especially during the pandemic and post-pandemic, we really were kind of like, this is our only outlet, the phone, the screen. And so I think now, a couple of years later, so many people are just kind of stuck in that habit and that routine. Some of it's good. A lot of it is good. You know, I'm learning. I got a new skill. I'm, I'm cooking. Uh, you know, I'm connecting with community. But it's really, you can soak it all up. But if you're not doing, if you're not applying, where is it going? What's the mm. point? You know, you're kind of just, you're a sponge that never gets to clean anything. Yeah. I where do that. you think <laughs> I just, who wants to be a sponge yeah just, it's like it's like you're not you're not getting used <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're just stuck in the sink you know nobody wants to scrub mm-hmm. my bubbles it's <laughs> it's a waste it's a waste where or how rather do you know where you end and the camera begins do you kind of have that dividing line or is it mm. just you, you kind of just go with it fast to your point and just in the process you go all right this is content and this is my personal life yeah this is this is a great one because like I recently had some friends that I haven't seen in a while. They're like, dude, you like work all the time. Like, like, dude, you're like a workaholic. Like, when are you going to just like take a vacation? And like, at the end of the day, everyone's life is their own to live, you know, mm-hmm. like there's no right or wrong way to balance your own life. And I think, you know, many successful entrepreneurs talk about, you know, there's levels of obsession, but there's also levels of balance. Shout out that, Zach, bro, bro. I yeah, love yeah, Zach, yeah, dude. Just obsession. Obs- I, I love him. Obsession. He's. I, I I just love his work. Yeah. Um. And even like a Hormozy, where he talks about like, it's your duty to find your own balance and what mm. works for you. For me to answer your direct question of like, when do I turn off the camera and when do I just say, all right, this is like my time to just be mm. me. I think, I actually do it really well. Now whether people really? see that or not, it's just a matter of like. I have time where it's just for me and myself in solitude where I'm just like, yo, this is like the cameras don't need to be rolling, yeah. you know? And I think what people don't understand about me is that I'm a lot more introverted than people think. And I, a, a lot of creators say that. A hundred percent. A lot of people. Like, yeah. That's, why is that? Do you think? Why? For, for you personally. For me personally, it's just, I don't, I re, 
charge when I'm in my own solitude. Okay. And a lot of that comes back to just being an athlete and always having to like be on and having to show up for your team and all those things. Yeah. And during the pandemic, I actually enjoyed the aspect of running because it mm. allowed me to be in my own thoughts and allowed me to have space for myself. And even as a creator, like you start realizing that like you're on a different trajectory than what most people are doing in their day-to-day -day lives, right? Like when you choose to be in this space of any form of entrepreneurship, like mm -hmm. you're taking a different route. Mm -hmm. And to think that you're gonna be able to operate how other people operate that are not entrepreneurs, it would be foolish. So I don't necessarily seek a vacation because I feel as if the things I do is not work. Like yeah, 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 yeah. my yeah. quote unquote work is work to other people, but mm. to me, it's play. Like mm -hmm. it's as if I am a kid again. Like I feel like I'm in the most flow state when I'm able to choose the things I wanna do, when I wanna do it, where I wanna do it, with the people I wanna do it. So even my trip in Korea, like some people are like, dude, like, oh my God, like did you have time to decompress or actually like enjoy yourself and all that? Like I, didn't, I enjoyed myself during the suffering of the run mm. in addition to, to after, right? And I think as humans, it's about finding what balance works for yourself. And there's not like a way that I can be like, my way is right or my way is wrong. Like for each human, like find what works for you. Yeah. And if you have a passion that you love to do that doesn't feel like work, like I would challenge someone to lean further into it because on the other side of that is a lot of joy and a lot of bliss because every day you think it's Monday or Saturday oh, or whatever shit, day yeah. you want it to be. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah, like, dude, yeah. today I woke up, yeah. I'm like, yeah. like, is it Monday? I, I don't even know because Honestly, I feel like it's just, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, like yeah. every day I wake up and it's like, I have purpose. And when you have people that are moving with purpose every day, they come into a room different. They talk different. Like you feel their energy and it's just different. And for me, it's just not necessarily looking at what other people are doing. It's just, I'm trying to find my own balance yeah. in that. Um, but yeah, I mean, to answer your question, there's plenty of moments where I just say, yo, like this is the yeah. day I'm done and like cameras are off. Like I don't need to record. I don't need to do anything else. And um, I actually find so much peace in it. Yeah. So what happens, cause I've been here. So the cameras are off, you're not creating, you've consciously chose or literally in my calendar sometimes I'll put like literally block time, nothing. Yeah. But in the nothingness, I get so many ideas. I, I, I'm like, oh, I want to change this. I want to improve that. Or this would be a good podcast. This would be a good insert, whatever kind of piece of content or just piece of business work here. How do you control yourself when those moments come, when those ideas come to not undo the quiet time and the downtime that you just set aside for yourself? Yeah. I mean, I think there's, uh, dude, most times, because if you're on all the time, your brain naturally is stimulated. And yeah, even in the moments yeah. of silence or in quietness, like, Sometimes those are when ideas pop. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for me, it's just understanding like that's like part of life as well, right? It's like you can't, it's not like a complete on and off switch of like, all right, I've, even if I come up with an idea, I'm just going to force myself not to yeah. write it down. Just because I decided to do something differently does not mean that even my own consciousness or the rest of the world is going to get in alignment with what I chose to do. Yeah. I mean, I think honestly for me, it's like if, if I do come up with an idea in my like relaxation mode, yeah. it's just like you can write it down. You don't have to go deep on it. Right. You don't have to act on it. Yeah. Right, right. It's just like it, it, it's obviously in your own conscious. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're, you're thinking about this and you don't have to act on it in the current yeah. state. It's like literally, you know, Jim Quick talks about like, you know, your, your, your brain waves when you're in the shower come up with many creative ideas. And a lot of times when I'm in the shower, I just think of these random things. I don't yeah. ever, sometimes I'm not acting on it immediately, yeah. immediately but it's just a thought. And can, can we just honor thoughts again? Can 100%. We just like, Yo, how cool is it to have great ideas and not need to act on it, to not need to do something with it? Just like respect it, that little gift of an idea, inspiration, and just like let it marinate. 100%. There we go, baby. And I think honestly, really where it comes from is a level of having a level of patience. Mm -hmm. If you actually understand that like you're in this for the long haul, that you're not just trying to get rich quick, when I do come up with these ideas, I already know that a lot of times it's gonna take much longer to actually fulfill that through than the moment of me just thinking about it. So I don't put wow. pressure on myself of like, yeah. oh my God, like, dude, this would be a great business or this would be a great video. I'm like, okay, like now, now I thought about it, that's the first step of manifestation. Then from there, it's like, okay, let me write it down. And then let me see how do I actually act on this? Mm. But for me, it's like, I'm not putting pressure. Like, oh my God, like I thought of that idea two days ago and I'm, I haven't done anything about it. It's like, I just release that anxiety, mm -hmm. release that pressure of like, hey, 
I can move when I want to move. I can act on these ideas or these concepts when I want to because I'm playing the long game. Like I don't yeah, plan on yeah. like selling my personal brand in a yeah. year because I want to show to people that, oh, I made it. Yeah. Like internally, I've made it off the fact that I'm attempting this in my own Dude. mind. You know, Dude, I, I just like feel all that. I feel, I feel all that good vibe, good energy, the manifestation, like all that stuff, man. Like you embody it truly. I appreciate I it. I love it. I love it. Well, man, you brought up Korea. Yeah. And I was watching this journey for anybody that doesn't know this man ran Korea, not like went to go do a race in Korea, not like a 5k a marathon. He literally ran Korea. Why? Mm. When I first decided to do this, so much of it was around me seeking my own culture mm. and wanting to just learn more about like where my grandparents and where my parents grew up. Like really? wow. I'm an immigrant. So I luckily was born in the States. Both mm. my parents are from Seoul. They're from South Korea. And it was an opportunity for me to actually just immerse myself. No different than what we talked about of how people learn or how I, I learn personally. Like I learn by doing. Mm. And by immersing myself in that environment, in a new culture, I feel like I got a master's course on what it's like to live in Korea versus listening to a podcast or watching a YouTuber talk about right. the best spots, yeah. talk about where to eat, talk about what areas are popping for young people, for Looking older people. Looking at it through somebody else's lens, not experiencing it through your own. 100%. Yeah. And I think for me, when I was thinking about the trip, a lot of it was just gaining a different cultural outlook, a different mm -hmm. perspective, and walking away from it it actually exceeded my expectations in terms of the conversations that we had with locals, the people that we connected with, the second family that we ended up building when I was there. And for me, it was just so much more than just this physical feat. Mm. Clearly, that was the main component of being there. And when you see things on foot and you see it with your own eyes, like it just gives you a different perspective. And for me, it was mostly about learning about like how locals felt about Korea. Mm. I think so much of me was like, I wanted to go seek my culture, but I actually end up just with a different perspective. And a lot of that is rooted in the fact that mm. I'm just so blessed with the way I grew up. Even though I didn't grow up the most Asian, like I played football, which is dominated by African-American. Like I got immersed myself into that community. I moved around as a kid a lot mm. where I never really lived in areas where it was a lot of Asians. Like I didn't grow up in California where it's like, oh my God, like 80% of the students are, 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 are Asian, where you feel like yeah. that's more comfortable. If anything, I grew up in areas where it was way more diverse. White people, Spanish people, black people. Like, and it's just like a, a, a diversity, a pool of, of humans. And Which I'm, is great and has bro, its place. but like, It's a beautiful thing. But, but it, I think it's really important. I really want to highlight here for people to like recognize how amazing diversity is, but also like honoring your culture, honoring your roots, your origins. Everyone, I think, should have the right to explore that bro, for sure. and extract and then apply. 100%. And I think that's my biggest takeaway was how proud I am in terms of how my mom was able to raise me and my brother as a single mom. Damn, damn. Like, ultimately, like there's so many great things about Korea. Yeah. Equally, there's so many great things about living in the States. And I think it's the perspective that when you travel, mm. it's just like realizing what you don't know because oh God, you don't yeah. live there. Yeah, yeah. And you, everyone thinks you that the grass is greener, know. 100%. Yeah, but it's, it's just greener where you water it. And mm. I think for me, that was the biggest eye opener. It was like leaning further into culture, but then realizing like, damn, mm. the, there's things about Korea too that aren't the best. As great as they had, they've prospered so much since mm. the Korean War, which was in the 1950s. Mm. And in, in a matter of just 50 to 60 years, they've prospered. They're one of the top 10 like, in terms of revenue. Like they're one of the top wow. global countries. Damn. So for them in a short amount of time to innovate that fast, to grow technology, to grow their infrastructure. It's amazing, dude. It's so dope. Shout to out see South that. Korea. Shout out. If you, you haven't been, crushing it. seriously, it's worth going. Yeah. It's like, it's, dude, it's Seoul is equivalent to like a New York City. It's got yeah. 10 million people that live in it. Holy shit. New York has eight. 10. Damn. All right, on the list. I've never been to Asia. You'll I've love been, it, dude. Been Food been is over, delicious. Over it, you, you'll really. And it, dude, there's a lot of them, there's a lot of foreigners in, in Korea. I, I know. I see. Yeah. It's kind of like this new thing I see. Dude. I don't want to call it trending, but I see. Maybe it's just awareness theory, but I do see it popping up a lot more people in their travel. And, and, and dude, and Korean, like I think Asian culture is just kind of having yeah. a moment too, like K-pop, yeah. a Korean oh, film. You know, back from a uh, DMV area, man, you know, Korean barbecue. Dude, of course. Oh. I mean, I, I, cuisine wise, it's by far in getting more immersed into American mm -hmm. culture, you yeah. know? I want to go back to something you said. You were talking about how you were running, you were enduring. I forget exactly what you said, but basically kind of like 
you were experiencing, you were changing your perspective during suffering. Mm. You, know, you were running, how many miles did you run in Korea? 296 <laughs> in 10 days. <laughs> All right. So no doubt there are days when you're in your stride, you're in your happy place, but there are days when you're, you're in the suck, man. And I really connected when you said that because it took me back to a lot of times, you know, when I was in the military on a ruck march, just mm. you're in the suck, you're on mile five, mile 10, mile 20, and you've got all this weight, you know, my experience, yeah. you're, you're hauling ass, running your body weight for tens of miles as well, hundreds of miles. Walking, rucking, running the path that you have been on before hits so different mm. when you were there again in suffering. <laughs> Walk us through that, that perspective. Like, what did you learn? What was different for you navigating this landscape, but physically, maybe even mentally through suffering? Yeah. I think the, the element that was different with this one is that, like, you have to show up over a 10-day period, like, every day. Like, I've no, ran... I'm a sorry. Was this just you? Were you just running solo? Or was this, like, a... A group thing? I mean, it was pretty much solo. I mean, there was okay. days where people came and joined to like okay, help okay, run. Cool. All right, yeah. But like, I would say six out of the 10 days, I pretty much ran on my own. All right. Like I had my brother so, filming. And solo like, mission yeah. for the majority and then solo suffering. Yeah. I mean, I think this comes back to just your internal dialogue mm. and, you know, what you say to yourself in moments of suffering, in pain and in adversity and in, and also in, in, in success. Right. And I think for me, as I was starting to deal with some pain just from the mileage and the volume, it was more of like, how do I turn this negative feeling, this feeling of mm -hmm. shittiness mm -hmm. into something that is positive? How do I channel it? How, how do, do I yeah, it? it's like yeah. a clearly like, I can't change what's physically mm -hmm. going on like in my body, but in terms of my mindset, that is something I'm, I'm in control of. Yeah. And you, you actually, I want to remind you of yeah. some powerful mantras that I saw you share. Of, mm. I'm sure how you kind of endured the suffering. Yeah. One, be present. Two, embrace the struggle, which I really resonate with. I, military phrase, embrace the suck. Yeah. Three, this is what I do. It's me versus me. I love the dirt, the shit no one wants to do. Mm. And there is no failure. How did these mantras, if you kind of maybe expand on where you yeah. picked up there, you know, how did these mantras get you through the physical suffering? Yeah, I think mantras are just a great reminder. They're short and sweet, but they're a great reminder of how far you've come and that the end result is not what people should always look at. Mm. I think that I love what I said of like, this isn't a failure if we, if we, if we don't make it, right? Yeah. And mm. I think that actually is the game of life. It's the attempt. Mm -hmm. It's putting yourself in an environment to fail. And it's the man, man in the arena quote by Theodore Roosevelt, right? It's like, it's so easy to be in the stands or to be following along like, oh, mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I bet he's not going to make it. Look at his form. Like yeah. he's hurting now. He's not yeah. going to make it to day 10. And all of those things where at the end of the day, the opinions of sheep don't really matter. Ooh. And I think it's important to understand for yourself and anyone that's doing anything that is challenging, whether it's building a business, starting a podcast or doing a crazy endurance run, the internal dialogue that you have is the only voice that matters. Mm. And I think that that was what's, that was guiding me through it. It's that I just understood that, yeah, like I signed up for this. Putting yourself through chosen suffering mm -hmm. is an opportunity for you to grow and an opportunity for you to learn. And in those moments of doubt, even for me, like as positive as I am, bro, there was moments where I was just like, damn, like, like, dude, do I have to walk? Like, like I told my team, like, oh, like maybe we just have to, we'll have to like worst case scenario, we just go a little slower or maybe it takes us a day or two longer. All right, I want to go there. So you're human. Yeah. This concept creeps in of maybe I can't finish it the way that I set out. 100%. But you weren't going to quit. How did you go from changing to, to not allowing yourself to change? To just the concept of changing my goal, changing my intention, and then actually getting back on the horse again. Yeah, I think, I mean, dude, this is like, I think this is really relatable for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's, it goes back to like not beating yourself up too mm -hmm. much and giving yourself some grace while also pushing yourself and not breaking your body off, yeah. right? I think like everything in life is about balance. Even in those moments, bro, like in my mind, you're right. Like I set out a goal to do it in 10 days and 
I would be okay if I was compromised to then say, mm. oh, if it took 13 days, like I don't care if someone's like, oh, Matt didn't do it in the days he did. Yeah, you, know? you come do this yeah. in the time frame. You know? I said, so yeah. I think it's just in that moment, it's like understanding that, hey, there's always a plan B. There's always an opportunity to turn your certain your circumstance into a positive one. Mm-hmm. And as long as the only people that fail are the ones that quit. And in that moment or in anyone's journey of life, like if you don't quit, if you actually continue to persevere in whatever you're going through, at some point you're going to come and find the light. And that light could mean that, hey, I gave it my all and this is what the result is. Or it could be accomplishing the thing. Mm -hmm. Whatever Mm -hmm. the result is, I think for humans, if you understand that you gave it everything you had, you can live with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people need to hear that changing course is not failure. So many people, you set out on, you want to run Korea, you want to start a business, you want to insert your goal here, and then you kind of come up against the wall. You kind of come against, you know, this shit is harder than I thought. What if, what if, what if? But if you just stay true to your vision and don't abandon it entirely, like change is not failure. Pivot is not failure. Um, I don't think a lot of people fully realize that. They think if you if you change course, then you're abandoning the course entirely. Yeah. It's the reason I love endurance marathons, ultras is that it's hard to have a perfect plan. Mm. There's highs and lows. Like it, it's hard to, it's hard for all the variables to be in your hand. Right. Like sometimes Mm. you get dealt a two seven. Like if you're playing poker, like what do you do with the two seven though is the answer. Mm. Like sometimes it rains. Sometimes it's going to be too hot. Sometimes you might skip out on your nutrition or you might not have access to the fuel. Like Mm -hmm. the beautiful part about endurance is that it's actually the best similarity to life. There's highs and lows, there's ups and downs, there's moments of like endorphins, there's moments of highs and there's moments of like you feeling like, damn, like this is impossible. And the ability to to push through that, Mm -hmm. to stay even keel, I think is the greatest example of life because most of life is the same exact way. And unless you're someone that's not taking any risk, like those are the only people that might have an even kill, like a, a flat trajectory. Well, but really agree, if yeah. you're literally trying yeah. to stretch yourself, you will be in moments mm-hmm. where you don't think it's possible. And to push through that is actually where you're going to get the result. And I think the marathons and endurance is the same way. It's like, I'm just, I'm as just as human as anyone else. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't think that there was moments where I thought like, damn, mm-hmm. like is my foot broken? Mm-hmm. And, can, can I literally can I, yeah can, can I can I continue running Damn. like do I have to walk the rest of this like what is that going to look like not just for myself but my support team yeah. like now I'm having other people that are bought into this same vision that I sold them on that shoot now we're going to mm. be out here longer we're going to have longer days we're going to be out here for more days like there's so many of that there's so many of those variables where you're like fuck like is it doable you know that's such a really good point too because I think as people as people embark upon new endeavors, you might find yourself uh, not in a solo experience. You're gonna be taking on team members. You might have support team. And then I feel like it's different when you hit those walls, when you begin to question yourself and you begin to wonder, how can I finish the same way that I started? What do I need to do differently? You now gotta be mindful of everybody else. How do you navigate that? How do you navigate the fear of failure? How do you navigate changing course and not letting other people down? I think I, I said it in the sense of the the attempt. Okay. Like, yeah. to me, like putting yourself in an environment to fail is actually powerful. Mm. Like going into Korea, I had never done anything like this. The furthest I ever ran was 100 miles in one, like, in one go, right? To then do three times that, you're really asking yourself to, to push a lot. Like yeah. you're, you're asking yourself to do things you've never done before. And for me... Getting into situations of the unknown, where you don't have all the answers, where you don't know what you're going to feel like or how you're going to respond, I think is an ingredient of success. Mm -hmm. It's being comfortable of the judgment that you're going to get if you don't accomplish it. And I think that when you're comfortable with your own skin and you're very self-aware of who you are, the opinions that you might have of other, the opinions that other people might have of you if you don't accomplish it don't really matter. But you still, but you have, so the opinions of others, like outside people chiming in, the peanut gallery, all that, do you view that differently than like actually having direct support team of like, hey, 
Like, like my brother, way, of course. You know, you know what is he going to think? Am I going to let him down? You know, what are we going to do differently? Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think it, it it it's different, but yet similar. Hmm. Even the people that were supporting me, like it's just being transparent with them of like, yo, this okay. is kind of where I'm at, you know. But like, ultimately, it was not a mode of like, I, in my mind, if I had for whatever reason had to stop at day eight. But I knew that I gave everything that I had to my team, to myself, and to the mission of accomplishing this. They would know that too. They would know it too. Yeah, yeah. I would not feel like I let them down because I'm like, yo, they saw the grit mm. and the resilience that I was going through and, and the, the mantras and the mindset that I had even attacking the pain and attacking the miles where I don't think I, I wouldn't have felt like, oh, I failed y'all. Gotcha. It really would have just yeah. been like, guys, you yeah. like this is everything I have. Yeah. And if I had to walk it, like it would like in my mind it's a still a success right because mm -hmm. i think we, we accomplished Absolutely. the mission yeah. but i don't think it would have been of like yo i failed you guys if anything i would have just felt bad more of like yo clearly now like your guys's time like mm -hmm. it was just like it's a sacrifice but, but they signed a up of a journey 100 they signed up for the journey they signed likely. up for yeah. the journey as well right because there was no guarantee that it's going to be a walk in the park right and i think at the end of the day for whether you're the leader of the ship or you're the one that's mainly like having the the eyes on you, mm -hmm. everyone's bought into the mission, right? And I think when you're in that moment of really stretching yourself, people can also understand that, hey, like mm -hmm. failure is part of life. If I didn't make it, it would have been a good learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I would have been like, guys, let's run that shit back next year, <laughs> you know? So that's how I would, that's how my mind goes. And I don't think it would be like, yo, I let y'all down. If anything, it's like, yo, we did everything we could. We, sh we maximize every opportunity. And this is the result mm -hmm. that we live with. Um, I was catching up on some other pieces of content and interviews of yours. And uh, to kind of shift gears a little bit, you talked about how you, you quite literally cheated your way through life, cheated your way through yeah. school. Um, now you kind of are like, making up for that you kind of i think exactly said you're seeking out to be a student and making sure that you are quote the dumbest person <laughs> in the room are you making up for the cheats uh are you kind of just like changing how you view life entirely and becoming a student of life every damn day i think it's a mixture i mean one thousand percent that when i was in school i never just i never really applied myself mm. So I think I am playing on catch up because I think there were certain areas of my life that looking back on it, I wish that I consumed things differently when I was at that age. I'm not that upset that I didn't pay attention in chemistry and cal like calculus and all those things, yeah. but in terms of- I don't think of, anybody is. Right? Honest, yeah. But I think in terms of having a curiosity with when it comes to entrepreneurship and self-help or finance or these areas where they were weaknesses of mine mm -hmm. because I spent so much time in football. Mm. I 1000% agree that there's levels of me like, oh, like now that I have this mindset and that I'm more mature and I'm at an age now where I'm way more in control of like what I want to do, I'm 1000% playing catch up. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important for anyone to like, if there's areas of weakness in your own life, it's finding time to invest into it. So many people double down and triple down on their strengths and that's easy. That's, that's comfort. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's always like, all right, like, I understand the things I'm good at. And I think I, you should continue to sharpen your strengths. Mm -hmm. But doubling down and tripling down on your weaknesses allow you to expand your horizons in terms of who you are as a human. And that's kind of the, the boat I'm in now because for a long time, bro, I was just solely invested into one thing and it was being a football player. Mm -hmm. So I think now I enjoy being the dumbest person in the room. I enjoy not having all the answers, yeah, yeah, but surrounding yeah. myself with high level people because ultimately for a long time, like it was just like shooting the shit locker room talk. And you know, you're in the military. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's just like that yeah. you start realizing like the conversations are just different. Yeah. yeah. It's totally different. And you just, you, this assumption is made that this is the norm and this is what it, what it is and what it is going to be. But then you kind of step outside of it one day and you're like, shit, I don't even know if that's what I like. I don't even know if that's me. Was I just assimilating? You know, was I just acclimating to something that really doesn't serve me? Mm. You know, what does serve me? What what am I curious about? Let me just go figure that shit out. Yeah. What is an area of weakness right now that you're working on to become a strength? Ooh, there's that's not running. Not running. <laughs> of course, creative. of course, of course, of course. Um, you know, I, I think even myself as a creator, dude, like people give me so many flowers, like, dude, like it like seems like it's so easy for you to make content, all this like like YouTube is a space that I feel as if is a weakness for me still. And the ability to to storytell long form, the ability mm. to keep 
an audience engaged throughout a long form video. Because most of your stuff is short format. Yeah, most yeah. of it has been. And like the past year and a half, I've invested a lot more time, energy, and assets into building my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And I still think it's an area that I can improve. And I, How so specifically? What are you trying to improve on YouTube? I think it's just storytelling in a long form capacity. And I think what Mr. Beast does best is that he addresses exactly what the video is gonna be within the first five seconds. Mm -hmm. And then his ability to keep a middle school level mind attached to the video throughout the, mm -hmm. the whole concept, it's something that I'm still working on in terms of how I portray it in video, gotcha. in addition to how I want it post-produced by my team. And I think that as a creator, I, you should always be sharpening your own tools. Like. I'm always willing to stretch myself in other areas because yeah, like I don't think I'm the best creator in the world. I, I think I do great stuff, but at the same time, like there's You're doing so, all right, man. You're I appreciate right. it. You're doing some great shit. Yeah. I appreciate it. But I think there's so there I always look at my content as like I'm analyzing it all the time. Like, why did someone consume this piece versus this? Like, why did the a Chicago Marathon Adidas video do way better than my other marathon videos? Yeah. And there's so many elements of content that you can digest, no different than the mm -hmm. film that we talked mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And for me, I would say YouTube's an area where I'm heavily focused on for next year again. Mm -hmm. And I think for any creator, finding the chinks in your armor, mm. it's good. It's really good. It's um, the most important thing. 100%. Because if not, thing, like, yeah. you just, your content gets stale. Mm. And it I, I know that there's certain things I can do for short form that will have excessive performance in terms of the vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. But sometimes knowing that, it becomes your own crutch because you just produce the same stuff over and over where... Like I'm willing to challenge myself outside the box and be like, all right, like let me do, let me do a what I eat video or let me do like a skincare video because yeah. like there's elements of who I am that I have not always shown, yeah. right? So which was great by the way. I saw the one you did. That one was dude, that video, dude. It was great. It, it, it did Yo, great. Guys, take care of yourself. A little take bit, care of your right? skin. <laughs> uh, I want to go back to something in running that mm -hmm. um, I really want to kind of just dive into your mind and kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier about when you're in the suck, really. What goes through your mind in mile one compared to mile 10, compared to mile 20 to 100? Like as the suck gets worse and as the miles stack up, what changes in your mind? Is it a different mantra? Is it mm. different self-talk? Is it just a natural progression that kind of comes naturally? Like how does the mind evolve with the body work? Yeah, it's, I think the mantras are a big key. Like I'm not in a pain cave at mile one. So for me to be mm. like, like I love the dirt. It's like, it, it doesn't like the context is not, it doesn't stick. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, yeah, match yeah. how you're feeling. Yeah. Um, but I think the first thing is you assess your own body and how you're feeling. Hmm. And as I've gotten very used to marathons this year, like I know that there's a point within the 26.2 miles that like, yeah, like it happens differently every race. Sometimes it hits you at 18 and you're like, damn, like I feel a little twinge in my calf. I feel a little twinge in my hammy. Like I can clearly feel like my heart rate is higher than at a different point at a different race, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes back to what I said earlier about like all the different variables, weather, the course, is it, there's their elevation that you're facing mm -hmm. and every marathon brings different challenges. So even my own mantras to myself, it just changes based on how I'm feeling. I think one that I can really pull back to is when I was in Leadville. I helped a friend this year in Leadville and yeah, I, I ran uh, the last, Nate Boyer. Dan Churchill did that at Mutual Yeah, Dan Home. did yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Earlier this year, yeah. he, he went through some suck on that. Bro, Dan, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Dan's a beast of an athlete. And yeah. like, dude, Leadville's no joke. Mm -hmm. Separate story of like, Leadville is like, it's a proper test of your mental fortitude and your physical capabilities. It's a crucible. Crucible. Absolutely, yeah. But even for me going through Leadville, first time at 10,000 feet of elevation, and I was a pacer. Jeez. So I helped my friend Nate Boyer for the last 38 miles. We were coming up on mile 26 for me, which is probably 80 something for him. And we were give, reaching a summit of a mountain, like 12,500 feet. And Dude, like this was the first time where I was summiting elevation and you're losing oxygen every step that you go up. Mm -hmm. And internally, I literally, bro, like I had to close my eyes and just take it one step at a time mm -hmm. and just like literally not try not to pass out as the pacer. I want the audience to really take <laughs> home that point right there because it, it's such a unique concept of as you're choosing, consciously choosing to put one foot forward and move forward and you're technically getting closer to accomplishing your goal. Yeah every step closer to finishing that becomes even more and more difficult. And in this example, you're actually losing more oxygen with every step that you're moving forward like to your finish line. The like, elements are working against you here. Literally. 
And Damn. in that moment, it was just like, dude, I literally have had internal doubt of like, dude, I don't even know if I can help finish him for the last 10 miles. You're not even there to run the race yourself. Bro, you're just, you're, you're there in support. It literally so as a you've got pacer. like a double-edged sword now. Like, I don't want to fail this guy. I, I don't want to fail myself. 100%, dude. And you got to think about that. Think about the chosen suffering that this guy went through already 80 miles. And I, I'm over here suffering internally. Yeah. And yeah. as a pacer, like, dude, I've not ran the whole race. And for me to start to express my pain and suffering to a man that's just ran 80 miles, mm. like last thing someone in that situation wants to hear is negative feedback or like, Dude. like I should not be what he's worrying about. Right. Even though internally, I know all of us are struggling. Like it wasn't easy on him either, but I think the biggest moment of reflection was even in that, men, even in that moment of doubt, yeah. the moment that you start to descend the mountain, there's like, you're getting more oxygen. And naturally, you start and to feel better. the descent has to come. 100%. We forget about that. 100%. We forget about that. The, the, the descent has to come. And I think it's, to what I even said when I was in Korea, it's just being present. Mm. Sometimes your moment of doubt, it'll subside at some point. And as long as you don't quit, mm. as long as you keep moving forward, even though you're at that point of like, you're teetering on the breaking point, you start to realize that we're capable of so much more. Oh my God, yeah. And I think in that moment at Leadville, even though I wasn't running that race as uh, like under my own name, I realized that there was something on that mountain that I want to seek again because not many marathons this year did I feel like, mm. holy shit, this is like testing my physical and mental grit. Yeah. Here's the edge. No, 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 no. Here's the edge. No, no, no. Here's my edge. Hundred no, fuck that. Here's my yeah. edge. And, it, and I think for humans, it's like, you know, it doesn't, what I don't want my message to be as I continue to grow and as I continue to do physical things is that you have to run these races to find your limit. You can find your limit in way other aspects outside of just running and endurance. That mm. physical aspect is just a way to really get the result fast. Mm. I always preach patience and delayed gratification, but there is something about during a course of a marathon or an ultra where you're, asked, like you're literally putting your body through a suffering and it, within a couple hours or 10 hours, you will find what you're made of. Oof, shit, and there's something powerful about that because it isn't like doing Pilates for five years or doing yoga for eight years. And like, how do you test yourself in yoga? Yeah. Is it by holding a position for X amount of time? There's something about running that it gives you a result. Mm. And for other people, if you don't like to run, well, then find something in your life that can challenge you in that aspect where you can see if what you set yourself mind, what your what you set your mind and body to, can you actually do it? Mm -hmm. Where the mind goes, the body will follow. Period. It's kind of a mantra I live by. Period. All right, so let's talk about running a little bit more, but kind of in the community aspect, man. I Love that. personally, I feel like running <laughs> is becoming this new. It's spreading the nation. Dude. It's this craze that is kind of taking the place of where traditional fitness had its place, especially in social media the last several years, last like eight, ten years. Um, why do you think running is becoming the new thing that everybody is flocking to? Like, I know people that are ditching the gyms and just getting some miles under their feet. Yeah. Why? why? This is a great question. And there's so many reasons, I think. But the first thing is the amount of friction that sometimes gyms and facilities and, and different modes of fitness require for people to get into. It's just harder. Like barriers to entry. Barriers of entry. Like location. cost, knowledge, not knowing what to do right, when they yeah. enter the four walls of a gym. Safety. Safety. Mm -hmm. When you run, most people don't have to get taught how to run. You lace your shoes up, mm -hmm. and whether you have good form or not, you can start. Like you can begin your journey. And that is a, the barriers of entry to running are very minimal. The second layer, which I think really gravitates people, is the social component of getting to meet new people. Yeah, that's kind of another note I had down of, I see running becoming this new thing in you know physical activity, exercise world, but also it's like that in the community Bro. have just like absorbed each other. I can't tell where <laughs> where one ends and the other begins. It's it's powerful. Mm. At the end of the day, as, as, as we get older, it gets harder to build community. Running allows people an opportunity to connect around wellness, mm -hmm. around community. It's not necessarily like drinking is not the focus where most people, they have their networking or happy hours as a moment to get right, to know yeah, people yeah. where you get to know someone on a run, mm -hmm. you have a, a higher connection together. You get to know them. Yeah. You, and you go, I mean, there's something to be said for going, getting to know somebody and getting to know somebody through a common uh, difficulty. A shared suffering. Bro. Totally different bond, man. It's a and and people call it trauma bonding, mm. shared suffering, whatever you want to frame it as. I think that there's something around 
doing that together and then breaking bread together afterwards. Like I know many clubs that go to a, they, they'll go get a beer after running, yeah. right? It's like you accomplish this physical feat and then yeah. let's go break, like let's go chill Absolutely, now, yeah. right? And I think running is having a moment right now in the world. And there's a mix of during the pandemic, it was something that allowed people, it was something people could actually do. It's very true. And now yeah. you have all these clubs and organizations. So and, many gyms and everything shut down. Dude, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, it, it, in LA, it's they polarizing. Like speakeasies. Like literally I would go to the back door and I'm like, hey, code word. <laughs> like, hey, uh, I know so-and-so. Like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Are you a cop? Literally was asked, are you a cop? Yeah. So I think, I, I think in my opinion, that's why running has now kind of, it's 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 getting to a pinnacle where, dude, so many young people are getting involved now. They're running marathons where you look back five, 10 years ago, dude, yeah. marathons were such looked at as an older dad's activity. It's so true. I didn't think about that. Right? It's yeah, like yeah. it was done by older people. And it's like what runners did kind of like at the end of their career. Like you would run and train for years and years and years. Yeah. To just but, do that. Like, and, and then you have the gamut of the, all the running creators and all the people that are making social content and they're sharing their journey of how they got into it. Mm -hmm. And shout out Zach again. 100%. Miranda, Dude, guy, and, and guys that yeah. aren't runners, right? Right. They're yeah, literally yeah. taking themselves from their industry, their niche, and they're getting into this activity mm -hmm. that it's challenging themselves. And it's then allowing them to build community outside of just what they're known for. Yeah. Um, and dude, anytime you have a sport, that is able to captivate younger audiences, it's always gonna be a positive thing. And brands are seeing it. Mm -hmm. The money that's getting into running is significantly higher than CrossFit, than Olympic weightlifting, than a lot of these yeah, activities that are that, yeah. weekend hobbies, right? Yeah. So Dude, now I see pop-ups all the time, like uh, Nike Run Club. All the, any, insert any big brand here, Run Club, is just dominating. And if you see ones that are not doing it, they're struggling to find their space within really? the running community. Mm -hmm. And there's so many new run clubs out now, dude. There's, yeah. dude, it's, it's in Austin, I can't tell you the how many run clubs. Like, What's a, I think, does Danny do one or I see- Danny it, uh, has a 4 a.m. run a 4 club. 4 a.m. run club, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Conrad, I see he kind of does a 5 a.m. run club back in LA. Um, it's, he hasn't gotten me, he hasn't gotten me yet. Con, uh, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta get you in there, dude. <laughs> I'm, you know, so anyone in the military can attest that you run a lot. Of it's course. It's kind of like a lot, all that you do. And, time the two mile, right? Two mile? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your best two mile? I have never tested that. Really? All right. So my best was 1232. Amazing. That's 1232. Yeah. Pretty solid. And oddly enough, it came off of uh, the tail end of an injury. Okay. I, I think it was like a hamstring or like I, I had a stress fracture, something in my foot. I was basically off. I didn't do shit for like two, three weeks. Mm. Came back. I got scheduled for a PT test. I thought I was going to bomb it. My best run time ever. That's amazing. Talk about downtime, man. Supporting, being able to bounce back even better. Which is really important too. Yeah, it truly yeah. is. Yeah. Um, I forget where I was going with that. But, uh, you know, running, I, I think, is becoming this new thing. And you said something that I think got me thinking differently about it. And I was just looking at running as, like, it's just like the new hot thing. It's like the new hot trend in fitness and stuff. But I think, especially for a lot of high performers, high achievers, the biohacking, you know, people that are just very curious about the human potential and yeah. what can I do, what can I maintain, what can I do differently. You, you, you said something that was like, this is different. This is, you know, getting people out of the CrossFit, out of the gym. This is something getting people out of the known territory and like, you know what? I haven't run in forever. I know I'm not good at running, but I've been doing all these other things to challenge myself, tweaking this routine, manipulating that variable, biohacking this, whatever. This is something kind of left. This is like uncharted territory that, you know what, if I'm really all about pushing my limits and finding my edges, man, this is wide open territory. Yeah. And I mean, dude, the barrier to, to do that with running is minimal. Just get shoes, go. <laughs> Bro, like, Put on your shoes, go. And I think the beautiful thing is like, you know, sometimes like even for me, like it, as, as much relatable content as I make, the more I do crazier challenges, mm. the less relatable it is. Mm. Very true. Right? Yeah, 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 so yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. important for people to understand like, yo, don't compare your time and your journey with mm. anyone else on social, with anyone else that you're seeing because ultimately, like what's fast for me is impossible for someone else, but it's slow as hell to compare mm. to like a Ch Kipchoge. And the same thing could be said with anyone. So if you're starting your journey, like don't look at what someone that's running a marathon is doing. Like, yo, start with the 5K. Start yeah. with one mile yeah, and begin yeah. your journey there. And Hell, the more and more, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. more you, the more you do, you realize like, oh, like 
you can improve at this mm -hmm. and it is uncomfortable to start but in most things in life like that's actually where the most growth happens is like when you're teetering on that edge of damn can i do this mm -hmm. i don't know and like it all that mental doubt happens and it actually bro has has so much helped me in business and content and it's instilled no a level no of patience and discipline yeah. that i also had from football but when it's around a hobby that you don't necessarily love yeah it is it just shows you like you can change and adapt and i think as humans that's the most liberating feeling mm -hmm. is to know that you're in control of your life and that you have the power to change and if mm -hmm. you can actually contextualize and, and understand what that feels that you are in control you don't point the finger anymore you don't live like a victim like you can adapt like stop living in the past mm -hmm. and live in the present and continue to move forward and i think that's what running yeah. dude it's it's truly taught me that of presence and also manifestation of goals and dreams and, and things of that sort. Well, I feel like you kind of just hit the nail on the head for my last question. Mm. And this is what I ask all my guests to bring it back home to the theme of the show. So Everford Radio is all about having great conversations with people that embody, in my opinion, the mantra that I live, that my father lived, that my family lives. And it's you, you figure out how to move forward and you live a life ever forward. What does that mean to you? Those two words, ever forward. How do you live a life ever forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that. I mean, I, obviously you. what I said, I think it kind of piggybacks on it, but I think even more so, to me, it's just not being stagnant. Mm. And regardless of what moving forward means to someone else, I think ultimately it's just not quitting on yourself. And I think when people get stagnant or they get comfortable, a lot of times they've quit on themselves internally at some point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like whether it's on their relationships, whether it's on their own wellness or their fitness or their business, like internally they said like, oh, it's not for me anymore. I can't live that life. I can't be that person. I can't be a marathoner. I can't start a business. And internally they've allowed themselves mm -hmm. to quit on themselves. And I think being ever forward is just finding a way to continue to pivot and to adapt your circumstances. Mm. So much of who I was a couple mm -hmm. years ago, you wouldn't even recognize me, yeah. you know? And I think for people, if they understand that, if you continue to press forward and you continue to be a student, like you can do anything in this mm -hmm. world that you want. It might take some people longer. <laughs> like if you want to run a marathon, that's okay. It's okay. It's it might okay. take you yeah. five years. Like, yeah. you know, but be okay with that, yeah. that you're progressing to this goal, that you're progressing to whatever you want to do in this world. And yeah. I think it's actually the most relatable thing in this world is to just move forward one step at a time and not quit on yourself. You know, I think that's such a powerful takeaway. A lot of times people, and there's never a right or wrong answer. I appreciate everyone's interpretation. When, when you say, I want to move forward, I want to go forward, ever forward. It's just like, how, like, how do I go? How do I do? But you can kind of reword, rethink that. You just need to go. If I just don't quit, if I just don't stop that, I think allows you to kind of really, give yourself grace to your point earlier, mm. but kind of go back to the point of acknowledging that I am doing, I am moving. It's not about how much more do I need to do? How much more do I need to be? But honor what I am doing mm. because this has gotten me thus far. Yeah. And if I just don't quit, like in a week, in a month, in 10 years, I'm going to look back and it's going to be the same thing I'm doing right now. Period. Or not doing the same thing, but you know, I'm going to realize how much far further I've gone. Yeah, dude, I pinch myself at times. Yeah. When I think about and I reflect on just like the journey that I've been on and like people that I used to look up to that I get to sit at the table with or whatever it might no be, doubt. right? Like whatever that sliding scale of your mm -hmm. like manifestations that end up coming into reality. I think for people, it's like if you actually contextualize it internally of like we live in a day and age of technology yeah. and access. And if you want to do something, you want to learn something, you want to get better at anything, like it's actually, there's no excuses now mm -hmm. besides the ones that you're creating in your own mind. And I think to your point of the ever forward, it's just like, yo, we live in a day and age where there's no excuses. Truly, man. It, the only thing keeping you from access to what you want is action or inaction. That's it. There's literally no excuse with a, a phone, a camera, a microphone, with just getting out and, you know, finding a run club, like literally just taking action, plugging in to the people, the environments, the things, the mindsets that are in alignment with what you want and the access that you think that you need or want. Like that's literally the only difference between having or not having is are you taking action or not? Yeah. You learn by doing. Absolutely. Man. Not by consuming. We'll do Matt. This has been great. Uh, like seriously, 
you're a hype man. What you're doing is incredible. Your energy is unreal. You're doing you, but also I love the community that you are plugging into. I love the community that you're fostering and building. Um, you're a leader, man. You're a leader, true leader. I appreciate it, bro. It's, it's been fun to share this space and yeah. chat about uh, the journey. And, and it's been fun because like this is like the first one I've, I've chatted about like Korea a lot. And like, oh, really? Okay, yeah, cool. Because I mean, I've right. done some PR stuff yeah. post. I'm sure. Like with Strava and some other yeah. stuff. But like, um, it's a gnarly event. Yeah, no, it, dude, this is, uh, I appreciate you um, having me, man. Oh, my pleasure, man. But seriously, the joy is all mine. Where can the audience go to connect with you more, learn more? Yeah, about yeah. I mean, you guys can follow me on, on Instagram and on TikTok, Matt Troy underscore six, and then on YouTube if you want to see some more long form, which we're consistently improving. You heard on YouTube 2024. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, baby. Um, uh, check it out there. I'm Matt right, Troy. Appreciate dude. you.